Hi again, here we are to talk about Xcode, and I'd like to continue with the to-do app. And this is my to-do app so far, and what I'd like to do in this video is start adding the date. So, you know, when you post a to-do, you'll include a date, maybe like a to-do date, okay? Um, and so what we need is we need a way to input the date. Um, I made a couple of videos on using the text field and using an alternate input, and that shows how to add a, a date input. So for more information, you can go refer to those videos. And I'm going to just follow that same example here. So, you know, how do we get started? Well, I'm going to go to this view here, which is our view that lets us add a new to-do item, okay? And um, this field right here is where we name our to-do item. Maybe I'll put a placeholder text in there, name, right? So we can tell that that one's name. Um, what I need to do is I want to add another, uh, I want to add the date picker here, but what I want to do is I want to hide the date picker and just show the date in a text field, and when you tap on the text field, the date will slide up from the bottom and you'll be able to choose it, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I, I need to set up this view. So what I want to do is first remove all these constraints because I'm going to rearrange the elements and then I'll want to add the constraints again. So I'll go to the um, Issues button down here, the little triangle, and where it says All Views, I'll choose Clear Constraints. So now they're all gone, okay? And what I'll do is I'll move the Name field up a little bit and move the buttons down a bit. And then I'll grab another text field here. and size it something like that. Maybe I'll move this guy. It looks like he's not quite to the margin there, so I'll adjust this one a little bit. Maybe bring these buttons in just a hair. There we go, right? Yeah, there we go, right? So I'll save that. And maybe this will be the date, right? So I'll just, just for now, I'll put a placeholder of date in there, right? And now what I want to do is I want to add some constraints. So I'm just going to take the lazy approach and choose from the little layout issues button. I'll choose down here where it says all views. I'll choose add missing constraints. There we go, done. And if I select it, you can see Xcode added a bunch of constraints. So, um, so that's pretty good. Now we should take a look at the view controller for, for this thing, right? And let's add a few things to it, okay? So we'll need an outlet for this new um, text field, right? So this is the add to do view controller. So I'll open that up. And then I'll option click on main storyboard to open main storyboard over here. And then I'm going to control drag from the date text field because right now I have um, I have this text field here and it's got a it's got a, an outlet already. So if I look at the at the um, the connections inspector, you can see it's name text, right? And it should be should be this one. So this guy needs a an outlet. So I'll control drag from the date text field into my view controller, and let's call this date text, okay? And then we'll click Connect. So now I've got my uh, my other outlet here. And um, and now we need to control the text field because we're going to run into this problem where... Let's test our project here. Let's see where the... Uh, you know, where when we're in here, you know, we'll click and then the keyboard won't go away, right? So we'll want to hide the keyboard. And when we click on the date, we'll want to see the date picker here instead of the keyboard, okay? So the first thing we need to do is we need to declare this class as a UI text field delegate, okay? And then the next thing we're gonna do is down here in view did load, and you could actually do this in storyboard too, like I explained in the other video. But I'll just do it here in, in view did load. Um, I need to assign um, this class as the delegate 
for each of these text fields. So when these text fields want to communicate with their delegate, they're going to talk to our view controller. So we'll say name text dot delegate equals self and date text dot delegate equals self. Okay. So now we're the delegate, right? And then let's add a couple delegate methods here. So I'll say mark um, text field uh, delegate methods, right? Okay. And uh, so the first thing is um, uh, when you hit return in the text field, what should happen? Like we want the we want the the keyboard to shut, right? So or close. So so what we'll do is we'll say um, we'll start typing text field, and uh, this will pull up all the delegate methods because now that we're the we're a delegate, it'll list the delegate methods for us, right? And the one that we want is should return. So this means you've hit the return key in in one of the text fields. And what we'd like to do is we'll have to return true. Okay, so yeah, text field should return. And then we're also going to say text field dot resign first responder. Okay, and that will close the, um, the text field. Let's give it a test. So I'll click run, wait for the project to open in the simulator. We'll click the plus button to add a new to-do item. If I click in name and I start typing, you know, hello, and then I hit return on the keyboard, keyboard goes away, right? If I type in date and I type in November 3rd, 2015, and then if I, if I hit return on the software keyboard, the keyboard goes away, right? So that's working well, right? Um, so we'll put that away. So now, you know, how do we get the date picker to show up? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we're going to add another method here, and we're going to say uh, text field did begin editing. Okay, so text field did begin editing. So this means, you know, you clicked in the text field to start editing. And every text field has an input view. And the input view usually is the keyboard. And you can assign different keyboards through the inspector here, right, um, in Storyboard, right? It'll give you the option to do a number pad or like a Facebook keyboard or the Twitter keyboard, um, you know, web keyboard or, you know, I don't know. Diff they have like a few different ones. You know, the keyboard is just a, a view, right? It's not a piece of hardware. It's like a piece of software with buttons and things that you can click on. Um, you know, and it's got its own logic and stuff, right? But what you can do is you can assign any view as an input view for the keyboard or for the, for the text field, right? That doesn't have to be the keyboard. And so in our case, what we want to do is we want to show the date picker, right? So when I say, you know, text field did begin editing, let's say let date picker equal UI date picker. And then we'll say text field dot input view equals date picker. Okay? So the input view here could be any view. Usually it's the keyboard, right? So uh, so let's give that a test. This will need a little work, right? But we'll just test that out and see how it works, right? And I'll add another thing and I'll, I'll click in the date field here. And you can see there's the date picker, right? Now, our problem here is that, one, when I click outside, the, the keyboard doesn't go away. If I hit return, it'll go away, right? But if I click on the name field, I get the date picker, right? So that's not quite right. Um, what are we going to do about that? Well, how about this on, you know, when we did begin editing, let's check and see which, you know, um, which text field you're editing. So I'm going to say, hey, you know, if um, text field, and, and remember, this, this function here, passes the text field that began editing. And for us, it could be either the name text or the date text, right? So it could be one of those two UI text fields. Um, so we should check it. So I'm going to say, hey, if, if text field, you know, equals um, date text, right? In that case, then 
and we'll wrap this in the curly brackets, right? So in our if statement here, right? So we'll say if the text field is the date text, like if they're the same object, then, you know, then we'll add the date picker to the text field. Otherwise, you know, skip it and we'll just show the regular keyboard. Okay, we'll do the standard keyboard, right? So let's uh, click the play button here and we'll test it again. And I'll click here and we'll type in the name field. Oh, we get the keyboard. So I'll type in hello world and then I'll click on the date picker and then it gives me the date view, right? That's a little weird. It switches between them without sliding down and sliding up, but that's all right. Um, but anyway, so that kind of works, right? We can switch back to this one. Um, you know, maybe if we tap outside, we also want to close the, um, the, 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 the keyboard, right? So let's add that too, and then we'll, we'll be done with this video, and then we'll continue in the next one. But uh, um, if we want to hide the keyboard on a touch event, we'll need to detect the touch event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in uh, mark um, touch events, right? And the, one, the touch event that we're looking for is called touches began. So just start typing touch, and then it'll give you a list of the touch events. They all begin touch. And we want touches began. So that's, this is the point when your finger makes contact with the screen. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, on touches began, you know, we need to tell our text fields to, to resign their first responder. And actually, any, you know, if we added another text field, we have to do that one too. So we're going to use a different method. Instead of having to say to each text field, resign first responder, the view, so if we do self.view, that's our container for everything that we see, all the UI elements in on the screen at the moment in this view controller, right? They're all inside view. This has a... Uh, a method called end editing. So I'm going to say, you know, self.view.end editing. Okay. And when you end editing, it's kind of like we're just telling all of our child views that they need to stop editing. Okay. And it has this option here called force, right? And you can set it to true to say force, like, yeah, they have to stop, or you can set it to false and then they can stop if they feel like it, but they can keep editing if they really want to. Um, I want to make sure everybody stops when I tap the screen. So I'm just going to say self.view end editing true, and that should tell all of the subviews that they need to stop editing. And it essentially, it'll just tell both of our text fields to resign first responder. Okay. So anyway, let's give that a try. So I'll click the play button here, wait for it to load up in the simulator, click this button here. So there's our view. I'll type in foo bar, and then I'll click here to select a date. And then, you know, in, a mi in the next video, we'll get the date to show up. And then if I tap outside, the keyboard goes away, right? If I click on this one, we get the date picker. I click on this one, we get the, the regular keyboard. So anyway, so that's working pretty good. And then, uh, you know, um, we'll continue this in the next video. And thanks for watching.